Sensory overload can feel like a loss of control. And maybe more accurately, it is a loss of control. A loss of control on how to organize, integrate, and properly process information from the environment. So one way to look at it is imagine the environment you're in now, and then turn up the volume and the lights and everything else by a factor of a thousand. And this might give you a bit of an idea of what it can be like for those of us on the autism spectrum. So how do we minimize the challenges that we face with sensory overload? Uh, for example, uh, uh, making sure that we stay in quiet places whenever possible. I know many autistic people who have difficulty going into what are known as big box stores. It could be a Walmart or a similar type of store where there's just too much sensory input. And those of us in the autism community often refer to it as failing the Walmart test. Uh, but if we do have to go into a Walmart, then it is something that the person should be prepared for. We need to minimize the time, so we might say we need to go into Walmart to pick up a gallon of milk, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to go in, get the milk, and then we're going to leave. And as a parent, you don't want to suddenly change your mind, oh, I need to pick up something else and something else and something else, because that's a good recipe for a meltdown. It's also important to consider that with sensory and perhaps some other challenges, maybe we can just evade or avoid this challenge and do something else in order to lead a fulfilling and productive life. So for example, I tend to be very low functioning in a noisy bar, too much sensory input, too much nonverbal communication. And I know that there are strategies in which I could use to be more productive in such a place, such as wearing ear protection, such as learning more about nonverbal communication, or I could just decide that I can lead a fulfilling and productive life not going into these establishments in the first place.